Hi, Amanda. Welcome to the Integrative Health Coaching Success Podcast. How are you today? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm good, thanks. So we're excited to have you with you with us. Thanks for joining. And I'm really excited for uh, to dive into what you do with your private practice, because I think it's something that we actually haven't talked at all about yet. And I think it's something that especially women are probably kind of wondering how they can learn more, how they can implement it with their clients or even for themselves. I think it's kind of a hot topic these days. So I'm excited for you to share. So let's kind of dive in. And what I'd love for you to do is first kind of share with our listeners what you're doing in your practice currently, kind of what your main focuses are and how that's structured. Okay. So I feel like I'm still kind of like honing in on what all that is. But so far, what it's evolved to is I have been in the beauty industry for um, over 20 some years now. So I'm a licensed cosmetologist and then I'm a naturopathic practitioner. And of course, I have my IHP certification as well. Um, so I actually see clients in office um, at a wellness center that's in town here in Zealand, Michigan. And I have the opportunity to to actually get my hands on people. And I do a lot of like facials. I do a lot of gua sha. I do a lot of lymphatic focus. And then I also have the opportunity to be able to start talking to those people about their skin concerns and skin issues. And we usually start diving deeper. And that often kind of leads into, um, other realms of testing, like gut testing, looking at other stealth infections that may be causing some of these, um, you know, skin irritations or, um, aging fatigue, all those other things. So I'm in office three days a week. That's great. And as far as the skin stuff, I'm curious, do you see a lot of people that this is like brand new, a brand new concept to them? Or are they kind of like, yeah, you know what, that makes sense that I guess what is happening inside is being reflected in my skin. Or are most of these people kind of shocked to hear that it's not just a topical fix, right? Because I think that's what a lot of women think. Yeah. Like, I need more facials. I need different serums. But what you're kind of telling them is it can have a lot to do with go what's going on inside. How much of, you know, do people realize that and how much is that kind of new knowledge to people? I think it's pretty like 50, 50, I, you know, I think there's a good percentage of women that come in that are like, I'm in my thirties, I'm in my forties. I'm starting to notice I'm aging and what can I do? Or, you know, I want natural treatments. What are all my options? Um, and so working in a med spa, I'm able to kind of give them this huge variety of what their options all are. Um, and then I do have those clients that come in too, and they're like, I've had acne. I've had eczema, I've had, you know, um, whatever skin issue and I've tried some things or, you know, dabbled in this and nothing's helped. And so I am able to help them dive deeper. What's nice about the clients that come in and don't necessarily realize there's a connection is that I can often give that little, um, just plant that seed of like, oh, you know, have you tried ever cutting out dairy or, you know, do you notice any reaction when you are eating certain types of foods? Um, and then, you know, I'm always asking like, how many bowel movements are you having a day? Are you pooping daily? Um, because it's just, it's so important because anything that our body can't detoxify, it's going to push out of our skin eventually. And so just slowly trying to teach them that, um, is just a really cool thing to see. So I think it's a really good, it's a really good blend and combination of yeah. kind of people in awareness. Yes. Yeah. It's so unique. Cause I feel like it's probably such a missing link, right? We're either, you know, most people are working topically on their skin, even, mm -hmm. you know, eczema and psoriasis, it, we're kind of taught that put a cream on it or find something to put on it as opposed to figuring out what's inside that's pushing it out. And mm -hmm. it's probably so refreshing for, you know, your clients to have the ability to, to kind of tackle both. And you probably get more skin results with clients. Is that accurate to say. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and there's so many like things you can do at home that are free. You know, so many people think that buying organic skincare and, you know, doing all these natural things and natural remedies is so expensive. And really it's not, I mean, you can easily just eliminate some foods for 21 days and see what happens. Um, and a lot of people are like, Oh, I really, like, I really did notice something or, mm -hmm. you know, or they're like, I didn't notice anything. So then it's like, okay, well that didn't cost anything. Let's move on to the next thing. Um, so yeah, definitely. I think people see a lot of, um, 
a lot more results when we can just bring everything in together. Of course. Yeah. And they feel empowered too. Right. I, well, I was actually just going to say, because you're not then like the Holy grail of controlling their skin. Like they don't have to see you every two weeks to keep their skin under control. It's more right. like they're able to make choices and see correlations of habits or what have you that are contributing to certain, you know, skin type reactions. Yeah. And that's why I love to, I do, um, a lot of gua sha in, um, my treatments as well. And then, um, you know, I'm able to like empower clients to teach them how to use that at home because they can do the same practice if they choose to every night at home and they can see results or if they're, you know, they are having a sinus infection or they're feeling puffy or they did eat some dairy and they're a little congested, you know, I can teach them like, how can you actually help support the body and drain that pathway? So. Yes. Yeah. I love gua sha. I think I have every tool I have, you know, a roller, I have a gua sha, you know, tool that contours. I have, uh-huh. you know, that's it there. It's amazing. And it, it's a really good way to almost calm your, like your sympathetic nervous system too, because totally. when you're doing it, I mean, you can't be doing it and running around. You have to kind right. of be still and be mindful of it. And it's a really good practice. It's kind of self-massage, but it's also a way to totally relax yourself because I find it incredibly relaxing. It is absolutely. It just helps you get into that parasympathetic. And that's what I tell, you know, clients too, like in order to kind of heal from all aspects, we really need to get into that parasympathetic. So I love doing the gua sha in the evening just to kind of like unwind and just, you know, relax or even doing it in the sauna is great too. Yes. Yeah. All right. So we're going to get more into all the details of that because I'm interested. And I think probably everybody that's listening is going to want us to get a little bit deeper into that. But I'm curious if uh, kind of where you started with all of this. So um, were you a cosmetologist first? Did it kind of, you know, lead into more of the um, naturopathic stuff? Kind of give us a little bit of timeline and how you arrived at where you're at. Yeah. So I knew from the time I was a little girl, I always wanted to do hair. Um, so I never questioned it. I went right into beauty school and I was a college cosmetologist for yeah, a long time. (laughs) So over like 20 years, um, within that journey, I developed really terrible cystic acne. Um, Thankfully, I live in a cold climate and most of it was all along my jaw and neck. Um, And so I was able to wear big chunky um, sweaters and scarves, but I was so self-conscious of it. And I mean, it just really impacts your self-esteem. So of course, at that time, you know, I was using what I thought was like the best um, department store brands. You know, I was using... um, Clinique and Estee Lauder and all these kind of well-known brands and started kind of just doing all the things that I thought that would help. So I ended up seeing a dermatologist, of course, um, you know, they recommended going on Accutane. And at that time I wanted to get pregnant and I knew the side effects and I wasn't willing to take that risk. I was just too nervous. Um, I didn't grow up like healthy per se, but we never took a lot of like drugs or antibiotics. That was always like really last resort. So, Mm -hmm. um, Then over time, it kind of just ended up going away. I got pregnant and, um, you know, I think anytime as women, we have babies, we're like, okay, what, what can I do for them? And then this whole process starts to, you know, kind of happen. So when I had the acne, someone gave me a book, um, and that was kind of my first little dive into some of these potential harmful chemicals. So I, I mean, I still have the book today and it's like literally falling apart. Um, it's just, I went through it, went through it and I would try to memorize all these long, long names of ingredients and try to avoid them. I carried around this little list. Um, and then same thing happened with, you know, my daughter, I was looking for the cleanest products possible. At the time I was using, um, a vino, which I thought was like just this high end. I mean, this is like 18 years ago, um, this amazing high end product. And this is before like everyone had like Wi-Fi, which just dates me. But, um, so I remember calling the chemist, I called the lab and got the MSDS sheet. And I was like, you know, this, this product, um, I'm curious if it has formaldehyde in it because it appears to me from my research, like if you combine these products, this creates formaldehyde. And he was like, well, yeah, the ingredient isn't actually formaldehyde, but yes, if you combine these two ingredients, yes, it creates formaldehyde. I'm like, well, but these are both in this product and I'm putting them on my baby. And I'm like, I I don't want to put formaldehyde on my baby. 
And so that was really eye opening. And that was kind of what started my journey into like, okay, I'm putting, I'm putting formaldehyde on her skin. Like this can't be good. I didn't have all those like pieces yet, but you know, just like most of us, all these little things just start to happen. Um, and then I had my own, you know, like health issues that I dealt with and sinus infections and stomach issues and, you know, treated them however my doctor, you know, suggested to treat them. And then I just started, um, gosh, I think when my, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer was kind of another, like, we always had these like big kind of turning points. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh gosh, I have to make a decision. And I also at the time found a lump in my breast. And I was like, it was like the same year. And I'm like, I have to make a decision. So I, I went in, you know, kind of just that fear, um, went in, you know, did, I was 29. So did the mammogram, did the ultrasound. And I was like, I have to make a decision. Like, this is the point in my life where I have to decide what am I going to do? And so that just kind of, again, unraveled all of this information for me. I jumped on every online summit, every free webinar. I went to everything I could go to just consuming it all. And then I just felt like I kind of had just this layman's information. Like it just wasn't enough, but people were just coming to me always, or they would always say like, this is my crunchy friend, Amanda, you know, this is my crunchy friend. You'll love her. And so I was like, Oh, that's the person that I become. Okay. And so then kind of like trying to own that, then, um, I was like, I think I really want to go back to school because I started realizing, Oh my gosh, like all these toxic chemicals that I'm doing, doing hair, putting this color on my clients and breathing it in. And I'm like, this is not good for longevity. Mm -hmm. Um, so then I decided to go back to naturopathic school. There was just so many signs. God just totally was just, cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm like in my thirties. I'm going to go back to school. This is crazy. And it was just so clear. Um, that that's exactly what I was supposed to do. And so, um, that was a little over three years. And so that was a traditional naturopathic, um, school. So a certification mm -hmm. and there, I really learned about, it was kind of like everything I wanted to know. I always wanted to go to a doctor, um, that could like, look at my eyes, look at my tongue, look at my nails, look at me and just tell me everything about me and kind of help me. Um, and so to some degree, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but to some degree, that's kind of who I was able to become through that program. And then I kind of felt like I have all this information and it's great, but I started to feel a little bit like, I don't know how to put this all together and like help people. I feel like I would often overwhelm people because I had so much to tell them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was beyond the point of like, oh, by the way, Diet Coke is bad for you. Like it's, you know, causing your joint pain. Like I was kind of had went past that. And so, um, then I found Dr. Cabral's podcast and I listened to it for a good year or so. And then I was actually in one of the first, um, the first rounds of the IHP program. And I just was like, I know this is what I'm supposed to do. Like, I know it's a, there's no like background or research that I could look at, you know, and get feedback from, but I just had listened to him and I just really trusted everything he was saying. And it was just, I just knew it was kind of that missing piece. Mm -hmm. So went through the program and it was really, um, exactly what I needed to kind of just like pull everything together. And then I was still kind of separating everything I was doing. Like after all that, I was like, okay, well I do, I am still doing hair and I do some naturopathic and health coaching. And then I do some like skin. And then all of a sudden one day I'm like, none of this is separate. Like this is all together. Why am I separating? You know, it's like on this day I was doing this on this day I was doing this. And I'm like, this makes no sense. Like this is all one thing I'm doing. So I feel like over the past year, that's well, year and a half to years, that's really what I've tried to do is bring it all in together. And then, you know, I think the hardest thing is, is anyone that is some type of health practitioner, you so badly want to be like all things to all people and you want to help everybody. Um, and I was like, okay, I, to accept that you can't be that person. You have to hone in on these are kind of my passions and specialties. Um, so I feel like that's kind of where I'm in now, like really honing in on this is what I'm really passionate about and, you know, helping people with what, you know, is in my expertise. So, yes. 
Wow. What a story. So as far as what you're doing now, more of the skin and wellness stuff, are you still doing hair? So, so, so little, (laughs) it's like friends and family that I just can't quite fully, you know, pull the plug on yet, but, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mostly the the skin and the wellness. Yeah. So it, it's so interesting. I don't know if uh, you know you've listened. Some of the listeners probably have yeah. heard this story, but I wanted to be a hairdresser more than anything when I was younger. And my mom ended up convincing me to go to college, so I didn't end up becoming a hairdresser. But I went to college. I started doing more of like a criminal justice type of background. I realized really quickly that that was just going to be a life of like negativity and constant stress. Mm. And I was like, I wanted to become a hairdresser, but now I have this passion, like with exercise, I feel like all of these kinds of, whether you're doing hair, whether you're doing skin, whether you're doing internal wellness, just like you said, it's all wrapped into one. You're just helping someone feel good. Right. Yeah. Whether it's that their hair looks nice or their skin looks good or their internal system is working better. I think the the most benefit that when you have the internal information is that we know that so much starts inside, right? But being mm-hmm. able to kind of make the external feel good too, also helps relieve stress and creates joy inside someone's body. And we know that that is dramatically important for well being. So, like you said, they are all connected. And now that I'm doing what I'm doing, I so often think, of course, I mean, instead of doing somebody's hair, I'm just, you know, working with labs, but I'm still getting the same end results. I'm still passionately living out the fact that I want to just help make people feel good. So you're right. It's in doing what your little expertise is in whatever way that is. um, It's so meaningful in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And so as far as the practice that you're currently working for, so you said it's a med spa. Mm -hmm. And so you're, are you, are you able to like run labs there? Do you do primarily, you know, labs along with the skincare or is it kind of, yeah. Yeah, So it's a really unique, um, opportunity and really like such a blessing. Um, it's, a combination. So we actually have a physician, a doctor, nurse practitioner, massage therapist, chiropractor, um, another esthetician, and then myself, um, and then, you know, front desk staff. Um, so really kind of have like everything in the best of both worlds. Obviously there's only certain things that I'm able to do and, you know, certified for, for labs. So anything that I can't do, or, you know, if I'm meeting with someone and the focus more is, you know, naturopathic, um, and coaching, I can direct them to our physician and our doctor so they can run blood labs and things like that. Um, and then, you know, I can do like the mold testing or parasite or, um, we really kind of work, together really synergistically on, um, everything. So yeah, it's, it's really great. It's great to be able to have, it's great to be able to have that knowledge. Cause I think so many people think, um, or I think I got to a point where I was like making my own skincare because I was so fr- my own skincare, you know, products and stuff like just for myself, because I was so frustrated that, um, I couldn't find anything that was like clean and organic and I loved them, but I could also tell like I'm in my forties and I'm like, there, I need something more <laughs> like, you know, I need a little something more. Um, and so there was kind of a time where I almost felt like I got to a point where I was a little unreachable, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of an opening for me to like, okay, I need to be reachable to more people because if I don't kind of open my mind and step out of my box a little bit, you know, I can't reach as many people. So, um, being in a med spa, you know, we offer so many more services and I was really, um, blessed to just be educated in all of those. So I can truly understand. And then I can educate others instead of being fearful of different things. Um, you know, really have the education so they understand Mm -hmm. and can make a really good decision for themselves. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious with what you see with clients, do you feel like a majority of skin conditions that you see and whether it's just aging, so somebody wants to you know, tighten their skin tone or there's acne or, you know, there's rosacea or those types of things. Do you find that there's a bigger correlation between what they're doing topically or a bigger correlation to what's going on internally, or maybe it's down the middle, but I'm curious if you kind of see a general theme. Um, 
Yeah. So it kind of depends if they come in already on a good skincare regimen, mm-hmm. then it's like, we've been doing this for a period of time. Then it's like internal. Um, and I really try to educate people obviously on both. Um, but I always kind of say like skincare doesn't have to be complicated. You know, we, we really don't need to make it complicated. We need the right cleanser and we need the right moisturizer. Everything in between there is a bonus. So, because if you're not in the right products, you know, your skin's going to be drying out over producing oil and you're just confusing the skin in simple terms, like, mm-hmm. you know, um, and then it can have all these freakouts. So that's where I say like, we have to start. Um, so I kind of just give people like clues, like, how do you feel after you put your cleanser on, you know, does it, does your skin feel dry and tight? Do you feel like you need moisture right away? How do you feel, you know, after you put your moisturizer on just again, getting people like in touch and aware, like how, how are they feeling? Just like we would like, how do you feel after you eat something? Um, so we start there and then kind of go like, what's your main concern? So, obviously if it's like, um, acne, you know, we can use some very gentle, um, like retinoids. And then we can also look at diet. Like we really need to focus on some of these things. And then depending on where it's located or the time of the month that it shows up, then I can recommend that they do some hormone testing, you know, um, cause we also offer that. So, you know, I, I can't say that I necessarily see a trend. I think, um, all women want to feel good and they want to have their skin feel like it has a glow. And I think subconsciously people realize like when they have dark circles under their eyes, when they're feeling puffy, they may not be able to put words to it, but I think they know like, cause I always say like when something shows up on your skin, you know, it's your body telling you like, Hey, something's going on when it shows up on your face it's your body saying like, Oh, Hey, you didn't listen to me. So, Hey, so now you're just going to see it every time it's here. It's right here. What are you going to do about it? So, you know, yep. yeah, just again, just educating. I mean, I love educating and teaching, um, clients. I think that's just, I'm really passionate about that and empowering them. So that way they, they know. Right. So. Right. And they're able to, again, then make their own cause yeah. any practitioner, whether it's a health coach, just, uh, you know, skincare specialist, a doctor, nobody's there holding your hand 24 seven. And so the, the knowledge and the empowering piece allows them to be successful when you're not there. And I feel like that's always right. so important, regardless of what you're teaching and what you're trying to help somebody accomplish. It's yeah. important that they get the knowledge embedded and kind of, and like you said, empowered to then take matters into their own hands on an ongoing basis. Yeah. And if someone wants something they're like, okay, I want natural, but I need something more than just products. But I'm, I don't know that I want like injections or I want to go to like a facelift, like, you know, what can I do? And so really kind of laying everything out there for people, you know, like microneedling is a really great natural option. Um, it's such a great way to, um, just give that like collagen induction therapy, like help just give you a nice boost. And then on top of that, you know, I can let them know, like, do you want to up your game with that? Add in collagen, And then teach them like, no, it doesn't go to your skin right away. It goes to your joints, your ligaments, your bones first. And then what's ever left over goes to your skin. It's also going to help heal your gut. Um, you know, adding in vitamin C and then, you know, kind of teaching them in that way. And then obviously getting rid of, you know, inflammatory foods so that will decrease puffiness and redness. So, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to give me your favorite, because I think a lot of listeners might be curious. So your favorite external thing to do. So maybe it's microneeding, like, like you said, gua sha, your favorite external um, in, intervention for skin, and then your favorite internal intervention. So between the two, what are kind of okay. stars, whichever one you want? <laughs> Gosh. Okay. Um, well, favorite external I would say I'll give two because I know that microneedling is more expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, but microneedling is, I think every woman should at least go through a series and a series means like three sessions is what Mm -hmm. we recommend. Um, and there's a couple different options. Um, you can do just traditional microneedling or you can bump it up and do radio frequency microneedling, but it's just such a great way to stimulate that natural healing response. And your body is producing its own cytokines and growth hormones. There's no chemicals used. Um, so it's, And I've seen such great results for tightening and toning the skin, acne scars, wrinkles, all of that, all those things that we're, you know, wanting to do. So if that's not in your wheelhouse, um, because it's a little pricier, 
definitely you can gua sha, gua sha every night. Um, and there's so many videos you can watch, you know, there's definitely, uh, there's a way, um, to go about it for sure. But I think, you know, if you're an intuitive person, you obviously can tell like you're wanting to fight gravity and you're wanting things to drain, you know, in your lymphatic system. So those definitely, um, would be my top two there for external, um, for internal, I mean, staying hydrated, I know that sounds so simple, but dry skin is wrinkly skin. You know, I mean, think of like a grape and a raisin. Um, so staying hydrated and then even recognizing the water that you're drinking, are you actually absorbing that water? So I always ask like, you know, okay, you're drinking tons of water. You going to the bathroom all the time. You're like, yeah, like every hour and a half, two hours, it's obnoxious. Like, okay, well, you're probably not really absorbing all that water. So then I just teach clients like simple ways, like add minerals into your water, you know, add like a couple berries into your water, do a green tea or, um, you know, anything like that, just to help that absorption. And, um, I would add one more thing that I think is absolutely phenomenal for your skin and overall health. So it encompasses all, and I think it probably tops everything is infrared sauna. So every time I'm like consistent using my infrared sauna, people are always, they always say, Oh my gosh, your skin looks so good. You look really good. Like like they can't like maybe pinpoint it, but it's totally the sauna. So sweat. Yes. Yeah. And so do you think, you think it's the sweating itself or do you also think it has something to do with the infrared light? Oh, totally both. Yeah. Both. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. I love doing, um, like a, it's like a hot Pilates class basically oh, yeah. to where they turn the, and it, same thing when I'm sweating that amount, my skin looks totally different yeah. than when I'm not. And there's no even red light component, but if you think about it, you're just purging toxins out of your skin yes. and that's a huge, huge part of it. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Those tips are so perfect. And they're so simple because just making sure that you're drinking good quality, absorbable water or drinking, uh, sorry, eating foods that have enough of a water content, right? So you're actually eating hydration is important too. And it's, you're going to eat anyways, you're going to drink yeah. anyways, you might as well maximize it and get the benefit from it. Yeah. And something like washa, those little tools, you know, you can get them for 15 to, you know, some of them get pricey, but $15 tool that you can do every night. It doesn't have to be that you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on skin treatments. Those are just simple ways to kind of depuff and mm -hmm. increase your glow. And even if that seems too complicated for you, you can always just do the jade roller or the rose quartz roller. I mean, mm -hmm. anyone can do that. So yep. yeah, it doesn't. Sometimes I just use my fingers too, or, yeah. you know, I like do a yeah. little bit of depuffing around my chin or I, you know, yeah. massage my neck to get my lymphatic system moving. So yeah, you yeah. can even do it without a tool. It's and you're right. There's so many videos online and YouTube, and there's so many ways to access how to do that stuff. Yeah. So if you had, um, a favorite resource, so say somebody's listening and they're like, wow, I have a lot of clients. No, they're not necessarily in a cosmetology or space, but mm -hmm. they have a lot of clients with skin issues. They experience, you know, this over and over again. Do you have a favorite resource? It sounds like you've probably accumulated a lot of this from a lot of different places over time, but do you have any kind of favorite resources, whether they're podcasts, books, websites for where people can kind of dive a little bit more into like skin and internal health combined? Um, yeah, cool. that is definitely this huge conglomeration. I mean, if you're looking for some like ingredient, EWG is always, you know, a pretty easy tool to use. Um, as far as like education purposes, um, I can't say like there's like one thing that's like standing out to me, but I like a lot of the, when you kind of look into like the Ayurveda and the Chinese just philosophies and how it talks about like dampness and internal heat and things like that, or even looking at, you know, how, um, like the blood type diet, different foods, how those affect you. I don't ever, I don't think there's like this one end all be all, you know, yeah. I think every kind of system has a few missing components. So I think you kind of have to grab from different things that you align with. I mean, there is a ton of information on, you know, the internet. Um, yes. so I love books. Uh, I, I really love books and, you know, I just utilize the library and just 
flip through just lots of books. So I can't say I have like one thing. Yeah, no, that's, I think the EWG is a great recommendation too, because it's not only a good place for practitioners to learn, but it's a good place to point clients too. So mm-hmm. people that are completely new at this and they're like, well, what do you mean? There's toxic chemicals in my shampoo or you don't have to, it doesn't necessarily have to be your opinion. You can be just look it up on EWG and it will list, it will tell you yeah. how toxic the product is. And it just puts it in, in the forefront of their mind. And then they maybe start to look up other things that they're using. And it's a great tool to bring awareness. Yeah. Yeah. I think always just staying curious, you know, that would be my tip is like, don't, you know, shut it off into one system or one way, like always be curious. Well, is this the best product? Is this the best route for me? Um, you know, without being overwhelmed, obviously, but just kind of always stay curious. Yes, of course. So, uh, would you share with our listeners where they can find you on social media? If you share things there or a website, kind of all the places that they could learn more. Yeah, I do. Um, I'm on Instagram and I try to share lots there. So that's renew your well, um, there. And then, um, if you are local or come to visit Zealand, Michigan, I'm at Wellness Co. in Zealand. I do have a personal website. It's amandatenbrink.com. You can reach me through email there, but I don't do a lot with it. It was just kind of a landing page. So, um, yeah. That's great. Thank you so much for being on the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. Yeah. This is such a fun and informative interview. And I think it probably gave a lot of people something to think about that maybe they weren't thinking about before. And if they were, just more information on it. So I really appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. And we'll be in touch soon. Be well. Okay, thanks.